ወድ የቻርላችን ተከታታዮች ከዚህ ቀጥሮ በመናቀርብላችሁ ቪዲዮ ታዋቂው የሰነልቦና ተመራማሪ ዶክተር ጄሪ ማርቴንስኪ ያደረጉትን የመርመር ውጤት የሚያሳይ ሲሆን በዚህ ውጤታቸው ሪሊጂንን ወይም ደግሞ ሃይማኖት መሰል አማኖት ወይም አምልኮ መሰል ቲዮሪዎችን ማስካድርጎ እግዚአብሔር ሰይጣን ነኝ ይያለ ሰው ላይ አፍታች የሚያርግ ኔጋቲቭ ወይም ደግሞ ፓራሳይቲክ ኢነርጂ ወይም ኔጊዱ ታልሳቸው መንፈስ እንዴት አድርጎ ሰዎችን ማኒፑሌት ለማድረግ እንደሚጠርና ይህ ማኒፑሌሽኑ ወይም ደግሞ ይህ የማጨርበር ሲስተሙና ቴክኒኩ ሰዎች ውስጥ ብዙ ጭንቅላት ውስጥ እና ጭንቅላታቸው ውስጥ ሐሳብ በመፍጠር የተለያዩ ነገሮችን በማድረግ እንዲሁም ደግሞ ለዚህ ሰላም እንዳይኖራቸው በመረበሽ የሚሰራው ቲያትሩ ምናምን ሶዮ ሲነቃበትን ወይም ደግሞ ሴትዮ አስተነቃበትና ሲያቀበት ይህ መንፈስ ተስፋ በመቁረጥና በቃ ድርቅ በማለት እንዴት አድርጎ ሰዎች እንደሚያሽግር ሳቸው በመክራቸው ብዙ ሰዎችን እሱ የሚላቸው ውሸት ወይ ደግሞ ይሄ መንፈሱ የሚታቸው ሴቶች የሚሆኑ ወንዶች እንዲያታርጉ እንዲያታርጉ ይብላቸው ውሸት ያጋለጡ ሰዎች ብልጥ ይሆኑና ሲስተሙና ቴክኒኩን ያወቁ በሲመጣ እሳቸው ድራሱ ለመደብደብና ህይወታቸው ላይ ችግር ለመፍጠር እንዴት እንደፈጠረ ያሳያል የዚህ ቪዲዮ አላማ ኢትዮጵያ ውስጥም እንደዚሁ ሪሊጂን ማስክን ተፈጥሮ የዲንጋዊ ሰማያዊ የመኖ አምላክ ላይ የሚል መንፈስ ሰዎች ቴክኒኩና አንተኖ ሲረዱበት እንዲህ አይነት ተስፋ ያቆረጠ ሪሊጂን ማስካርጉ ይገባ ሌባ መንፈስ የሚያደርገው ነገር ሰዎችን በተለያየ መንገድ ማሸግርና ፕራይቬት ስፔሳቸው ውስጥ ገብቶ አሳባቸው ውስጥ ጤንነታቸው ሰላማቸው ውስጥ ገብቶ መድረክ ነው ይህን ነገር ደግሞ ሰዎች ሲያውቁበት ልክ ኪሳው ላቂ ሌባ ከተነካበት ከዛ ወዲ ቲያትሩን እንደማይሰራ እንዲህ መንፈስ እንዲህ በወይሰን ዓለም ቲያትሩ ስለተነቃበትና ስለማይሰራ ብዙ ጊዜ ጥቃታ ያدرسም አገራችንም እንዲህ አይነት ውቀቶች በስፋት እንዲቀርቡ እንዲገቡ እንዲህ አይነት ቪዲዮዎችን ከነምስክርነቶቹ ከተማሩ ሰዎች ሳይንቲስቶች ምስክርነቶች ጋር እናቀርባለን ተበልከቱት voices the patient were hearing so that's interesting enough in itself but to to make it even more fascinating there's actually somebody who's doing this currently right now and i was able to get him on the phone for an interview because he's working currently in these environments we're just using his first name um to protect his identity so we're going a little underground i guess um but this this is somebody who was actually in contact with van dusen later after he'd begun his work they found each other but so he's got a really interesting story to tell and i first asked him about uh his name is jerry and i asked him um so how did he start into sort of this study of the voices of people and he he interacted acted with them he was working in um state prisons uh and mental hospitals intakes in the ER across like 35 years a long career of working with people who heard these kind of voices so this is what he said about how an episode near when he began to investigate the voices that people were hearing uh, i remember one one patient i was talking to where uh the voices he was getting better and better so this at the prison and i figured i figured okay well you know i don't know what these things are but what they're telling the patient is consistent and the negative and self destructive what i'm going to do is tell this guy to do the opposite of what they're saying and support him in doing that so i told him i said any any time the voices start telling you negative stuff you come tap on my window and i'll get you in for an appointment as soon as i can and we did that and he was getting better and better and better and the voices were getting weaker and weaker and then one day he comes in and and uh, he goes um the voices want to talk to you and they'd never done that before they never talked to me personally it was always through the patient where they'd say yo you know tell him he's a jerk or you know if he's crazy and you know it was always there was always an intermediary they never asked to speak to me directly so that took me back a little bit and uh you know i i went uh, well okay what do they have to say and i'll never forget these words they came out and they said you have no right to interfere with our way of life and the hair just went up on my back i mean our way of life plural this wasn't the patient talking you know our way of life and i'm like whoa <laughs> where did that come from you know so at that point i was realizing hey this is this is getting personal <laughs> this this is you know they are aware of me and they are aware that I'm interfering with what they're doing 
So that's just a, a, a very vivid snippet of this long story of how he got involved studying the voices of these patients and in the same sort of way that Van Dusen did in talking to the patients and saying, okay, what are your voices saying now? And he learned all these interesting things that they did, the ways that they behave that didn't really seem to square with this idea that they're just a chemical accident in the brain of the, the patients. And um, so that that's just sort of a little tiny preview of his whole long story where he found out, hey, these things are very goal-oriented, they display similar behaviors, all this stuff. And we'll get into a little of it here, but I hope to have more from him in another program. So w during this whole thing, you know, he had this example that he just said to you happened to him and it sort of freaked him out. He started to look around for what could this be? And that was when he stumbled across Swedenborg and I asked him about it here. I think it uh, it first happened when I I was uh, I picked up a copy of Heaven and Hell and started reading it, um, and I'm like, wow, this matches, that matches, you know, it's like, whoa, hey, this guy's come closer to what I've actually experienced with these people than anybody else I've ever read. There, there was one thing uh, where where Swedenborg was talking about spirits, and he says uh, they come to us by turning toward us. They enter our whole memory so completely it seems. Uh, so they themselves know everything we know, including languages. And yeah, that's incredible. I mean, that, that's exactly what I experienced. They can go into a person's memory and pull up every rotten thing they've ever done and rub it in their face until a long, uh, strong emotional state is created. And then they drain that off. So th that is sort of uh, the specifics he starts to get into there. If we're gonna say, Oh, I came across Swedenborg, and this surprised me how much it matched what I was finding. What was it? I mean, where where did they match up? Where did they line up? And he gave a few interesting examples of specific behaviors of the voices that match Swedenborg's description of evil spirits. Um, and we're going to go through three in sequence here, just to kind of show you the correlation and how it goes and try to thicken the plot as much as possible. So, he mentioned it before, uh, this idea that these voices or these entities of some kind can call up things in the memory of the patient and use it against them. So he goes into it more here. Well, <clears throat> yeah, I've had patients who would tell me that voices would dredge up stuff from their memory that they had long forgotten. And it's it's always negative stuff. It's always stuff that's guilt-ridden, shameful. Uh, it's always negative. And they just rub it in their faces until they... Uh, generating negative emotional state and virtually everything that the voices tell these uh, schizophrenic patients is negative. So that is a system he's talking about where they there seems to be even that the voices have some kind of memory access that the patients don't have. And you know, the, the patients, oh, oh, I had forgotten about that. And there's this, and it's not like, oh, sometimes the voices are friendly and sometimes they're not. They're always negative and they're always going at it. And Swedenborg describes this memory thing in a lot of places, including in Secrets of Heaven 751. Evil spirits stir up our falsities and evil as mentioned. From our memory, they stir up everything we have ever considered or committed since childhood. Evil spirits are able to do this with such consummate skill and malice that words cannot describe it. And you'd often get... Can you think about being Swedenborg and you're having these experiences and no one around you's had something like that? You've never read anything like that, and to just try to say, "This is really intense. What's happening here?" and and I can't put words to it. You know, that I can just sense that the the energy of that trying to trying to communicate something that was so important and so um, had such an effect on the world and on people. So that's Swedenborg describing evil spirits. That's Jerry describing that. Let's get on to the next one. He had mentioned earlier in a comment uh, this energy drain thing. So I, I asked him a little more about what energy drain was. If you talk to these patients, they will tell you, yes, I feel drained of energy and I can feel the energy being drained and leaving. Um, so apparently what these things do is they create a negative emotional state. And from some of the readings I've done is they can't produce this negative emotion themselves and it's what they feed off of. Once that negative emotional state is generated, then they they will drain that energy off. And if the patients will <clears throat> uh, say, yeah, I can, I can feel it leaving. And consistently, what's very strange is when you go to bring that up, that these voices are energy parasites and that they 
put negative thoughts in your head that generate negative emotional uh, states, and then they drain off that energy. When you go to tell the patient that, the voices get astronomically louder, so they can't even hear you talking. And if you don't know how to shut them up, then you can't get that information through. So you could say the voices are just biochemical process, but it's very interesting that this process would try to block information about it that it would somehow know you're telling and this is not just jerry came across this once he's had hundreds of experiences with patients like this so this energy drain thing uh and especially and the, the voices seem to even try to cover that fact up and swedenborg in his journal of spiritual experiences in number four five eight seven he says when evil spirits are applied then they induce agony of the spirit by means of tedium which they increase and inspire continually and thus they add impatience which begets the greatest suffering and induces such weakness on the body that the man can scarcely raise himself from bed. This was shown me by this means. When they were present, such a weakness took possession of me, and when they were, were removed, it ceased, in proportion as they were removed. They also employ many arts so as to infuse weariness and thence weakness. He's almost describing it like, oh, I was doing this experiment, or I was being shown this, like, here you go, this is Swedenborg, this is what it feels like, so you can catalog this and write it down. So there you have a couple of specific behaviors that are appearing in both these uh, men's experience. So let's take a look at one more, and this is what uh, I would call the cookie cutter phenomenon. It's very strange because across physical distances, different institutions, different states, once you go to tell the patient, inform the patient that these things are energy vampires, the voices will do, say, three things consistently, and it's almost like you know, they're all made it from the same cookie cutter. And I don't understand why this is, but it's very strange. They will, one, first of all, when you start talking about that, they'll get very loud and try to block out what you're trying to say to the patient. Okay, there are ways to get rid of them, so you get rid of them and shut them up. It's a temporary thing on the most part that allows the patient to hear what you're saying. Right. Number one, the voices will come and say, this guy's crazy, he's full of crap, don't listen to anything he has to say, he's a complete nutcase. Right. If the patient continues to listen, which they do because they, they see that you know more about these things than they do in a lot of cases, the second thing the voices will say consistently is get the devil away from him, leave the hospital, leave the office, run out of here, get out. Right. If the patient decides to stay, the third thing they will do is says, attack him. Right. And they, you know, they've done that. I had a, a psychotic Apache pick up a chair and throw it at my head and just barely clip the top of my head. And you can use that against them, you know, because when you go to tell the patient before you go to tell them, you say, okay, are you hearing the voices now? And they'll say, for, you know, well, no. And you can say, in five minutes, you will be. And this is what they're going to tell you. And you run those factors by and say they'll tell you to, you know, I'm full of crap, get the devil out of here, and attack. You know, and the, the patient is a little bit horrified. Oh, no, I wouldn't attack you. And I said, well, I know you wouldn't. But they will tell you to, you know. And in five minutes, that rolls right off. So he's saying that he's come across so many of these voices in these patients' head that he can know categories of behavior and that in different patients, so different brains, and even in different institutions, the voices act so similarly that he can catalog that and tell the patients, hey, guess what? When I do this, in three minutes, the voices are going to do this. And when the voices start to react like that, that gets the patient's attention. So how did you know what the voices are? Are about to do and you notice there that he has this he's found that it's so that strangely enough the voices will act so similarly and that's a very weird characteristic to think of even if you're imagining sort of an evil spirit what why would they all act the same um and this is something we actually couldn't find in swedenborg just kidding why would we put it up here if we couldn't okay this is from Spir spiritual experiences 4584 all in hell however many soever they may be when viewed in the ordinary light of heaven appear like each other and also speak alike so that you would believe them to be one and the same person when yet they are innumerable so this is just to show you that there's some kind of phenomenon 
that is being described by these three different people, Wilson, Dr. Wilson Van Dusen, Jerry Swedenborg, uh, as having these same characteristics across a lot of geography and time. And so this is an extreme example of what you might call evil influence. This, the voices of these schizophrenic patients run their lives and ruin their lives. And that a lot of time they'd be in the prison because the voices got them there. However, that's not the principles applied here can apply to more than just schizophrenic patients, more than just the fringe. It's something that can be useful to know about to all of us, which kind of brings us to our next segment, which is why are we talking about this in the first place? We're talking about it just as that animation illustrates, you know, that why would we talk about germs to find cures? Why would we talk about this? It's to hopefully arm you with information that will make your life easier and give you more success against negativity. Uh, Swedenborg, you can see in his experiences as he cataloged them, he began to, he was always being harassed by evil spirits. I mean, you, it's just like if you went into a, a dangerous part of a big city, you got to watch out because there's people that will harass you, right? This is his experience. He was traveling around the spiritual world, so he was going to run into a lot of negative characters, but knowledge made a difference. And you can see it here. We have a couple of quotes from him, from uh, his journal of spiritual experiences. Here he's describing, when I, While I was going to bed, the evil spirits overhead attacked with a plan to destroy me, deliberating to call forth against me all of hell and all evil and treacherous spirits whatsoever. It also seemed as if I were being let down among them. For other eyes, they were overhead, in fantasy lifting me up into their midst, so that I was now surrounded by them. When they had clung for some time to these fantasies, perpetrating whatever they were able, while I lay in safety, fearing nothing, only reflecting on the things that they were up to, finally, upon realizing the fruitlessness of their effort, they withdrew, admitting that it was of no use. And then further... 3614. This is a, another sort of attack that was planned, but then spirits complained because they could no longer be present. Because I was abiding in the higher knowledge of faith, it was not permitted to entertain objections. They said that they then have nothing by which they can lead, saying also by which they can mislead. For by the objections they, their objections, they very much mislead mankind. So when he didn't believe what they were telling him. And when he had these sort of higher principles of faith, this would be things like the divine guidance of the universe, the nature of the spiritual world and of the mind, uh, the good and evil and the, the shades and differences and how people should act and be. Those kinds of things, suddenly these evil spirits didn't have a handhold. And you saw with what Jerry was talking about, the more information he could give the patients on the voices. And when I, you know, other parts of the interview where I talked to him, just knowing, hey, these voices are not me. They're not a part of me. This is something, and they're, they're not helping me. Just to look back over events of their life and see how these things have caused so much problem for you. Just knowing that can make a huge difference. And we're going to get into that a little more in a second, but it's important to see that Swedenborg was able to gain sort of an immunity through knowledge. So we're trying to give you some knowledge here today, this beginnings of knowledge. As with every show, every episode of this show, there's a million things more that I'd like to say on each subject, but we just don't have the time. Um, so this is hopefully to get you started. Obviously, you can go through Swedenborg's books, pull up everything you can find there. Um, but the little bits of knowledge we arm ourselves with help. And so now I'm going to go into some specifics. Um, this is more from my interview with Jerry, where he talked about some practical things that he was doing with these schizophrenic patients to quiet the voices. And we're going to get, I know we've been talking a lot about uh, people that can hear voices. And you may say, I don't hear voices, so why? There's a connection, and we're going to make it clear in, within this section of the show. So hang on. In the meantime, be cataloging this information, because it's important. So this was, I had asked uh, Jerry, and oh, he, he said that there's a way you can actually push back against these voices by doing this. And this was part of sort of a, a system. And so I asked him, uh, so what do you do to, to get rid of the voices? Well, I can't. But, you know, for the most part, it's a, a, a temporary thing. Um, if they don't turn their lives around uh, and, and start asking for spiritual help from a, a positive direction, um, you know, that, that is only going to last for you know, maybe a few hours at the most. There's things they have to do, you know, to keep these things away. 
Now, uh, in my talks with Van Dusen, who was a Swedenborgian, um, you know, the first time these things hit and scared the devil out of me, uh, you know, I, I talked to Frank Rose and said, I need to talk to Van Dusen. Uh, and he brought up some experiments that uh, one guy was doing in the 1920s with static electricity. He was, he was actually shocking uh, schizophrenic patients with static electricity, which the voices reported was like a thunderstorm to them. It was like a firestorm. They didn't like it at all, and they would temporarily leave. You know. So I was at that time I was working in the prison, and I was like, okay, well, you know, how can I duplicate something like that without getting fired? And I was, I was running through all these uh, ideas, and finally I came up with the idea of a big rubber band. Uh, because it, the voices are so enmeshed with the person's thought that a lot of times they can't tell the difference between their thoughts and the voices' thoughts. And the voices don't want them to think there's a difference. They want them to think that they are them. You know, so one of the first things you need to point out is that these are not you. These are different from you. And they will start off very softly, and, and it's always negative stuff. You know, and, uh, you know, you talk to patients that once you hear these things, you can snap that rubber band. And that uh, I've been told by several patients that it hurts the voices 10 times worse than it hurts them. And that shuts them up temporarily. So this is just kind of a way he found to help people s snap out of it. Was that... No, 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 okay, okay. All right, so now, he talked about static electricity shock. Now, that's not like electrocuting somebody to cure them of mental illness. So static electricity, that's a thing you rub your feet on the floor and touch, it doesn't, you know, so he's not talking about that. However, so he found out, for some reason, you do something like this, snap yourself, it doesn't really hurt you, but there's this, these, there's this some kind of connection with the voices where they think, oh my gosh, this is, this is really bad, and it actually stops them from talking for a little while. And as you'll see, it's a sort of a theme. He found there was not only that, there was talk therapy ways. He, there was information he could give that could get these uh, the voices to stop talking for a little while. However, as you heard, you got to make a positive change. You got to fill that space with positive things or else the voices will just come back and come back stronger. So this we're just taking you sort of through a little uh, list of everything I could get from our interview where he gives any kind of practical technique. So this is another one having to do with, with uh, the idea of uh, guardian angels and, and evil spirits. Like Swedenborg says, you know, they have a two guardian angels and they have two demonic entities with them. And if they ask their, specifically, if they ask Christ or their positive guardian angels to shut these things up, they will shut up for some period of time. Now, the voices absolutely hate the 23rd Psalm. And they also hate Amazing Grace, that song. So, you know, one thing I tell the patients is even if you have to repeat the 23rd Psalm a thousand times a day, it's like sticking them with a hot stick. They, you know, they can't stand it. Uh, they can't stand anything positive. So, can't stand anything positive. And here he's also talking about specific uh, religious texts, or, or you know, even the, the Amazing Grace is not a, a biblical, it's in the Christian tradition, but it's just another positive spiritual thing, right? And that these have an impact. And this brings me into a very interesting um, part of Swedenborg's description of how you fight evil, and I want to call it only from the word. This is a phrase that he uses. He talks about, we did a show a while ago called The Purpose of Spiritual Struggles, and he says, we go through these spiritual struggles, and in them, we fight through what he calls the word. And when he's talking about the word, he uh, is usually referring to the Bible. Uh, however, it's not a straight reference, because as he describes it, the the Bible has all this symbolic inner meaning, and also that it, the principles in it can be found elsewhere. But So what I'm saying is there's sort of a network of truth, is a, probably the best description of it. Here in uh, Secrets of Heaven 8962, he describes uh, a little bit of that. These combats, he's talking about these spiritual struggles, are carried on by means of truths of faith which are from the Word. We must fight against evils and falsities from these. If we fight from anything else, we do not conquer, because the Lord is not in anything else. So what does that mean? I mean, we're basically, what we're trying to do is create in our minds an environment in which negative or evil spirits or influences don't have access and can't 
gain strength or influence. So you remember what, in the beginning we we're talking about bacteria. Bacteria need certain conditions or parameters in for them to be able to survive and especially to multiply and grow. So you need to have certain uh, amount of elements, temperature, light, whatever these particular, I guess, yeah, whatever these particular organisms need. So what is it that makes it that so that they can't survive? There's certain things, antibiotics or, or penicillin or something, put it in there, they all die in that ring. So what is it that we can put in our mind that makes them not be able to grow? Uh, so it's, and what Swedenborg is saying is it's this thing that's called the word. And I think about the fighting from the truths of faith. You think about them as like this connection of truths, like these points of light in your mind. These are higher things you know about life. This could be something comforting that you've experienced, you know, something you've learned from somebody that you value, something like that. The way I see it, it's these, this web of principles that reminds you that good is powerful and that there is we're being looked out for and that that we can we don't have to believe the negative messages and when you fight from that from this pre-established thing that you've learned then you gain uh we and let me try to explain this because this is an important concept to me we actually released a video on it called um how to stop unwanted thoughts where we use this principle this is how it works for me and this is what i find if i'm getting negative thoughts and feelings which this is we're talking about schizophrenics but as it shows up in the rest of us it's everything negative in the mind and jerry's going to say that in a minute i'm kind of stealing his thunder but when that stuff comes in if i'm getting some kind of negative message about myself it occurs you're no good at this or you're no good for this reason or you should be afraid of this or even the, you you know something like this is going to happen to you then if i start to try to fight from myself meaning like try to argue latch on to it and no i'm actually cool because this one person said this and that i lose I always lose. It doesn't get better. It gets worse. That everything that I try to offer to these negative thoughts and feelings, they twist. I end up feeling worse. It spirals down. But if I fight from spiritual principles, if I'm almost quoting things, you, know, you find what tradition works for you. I'm not saying everybody has to do it from the Bible. Pick something that works for you. But if you fight from that, like when they, when there's a negative attack, you have just kind of a few short spiritual principles you fight from, that has power. There, there's nothing that I've come across in spirituality that has power over negative thoughts and feelings like that. Try it and watch Yeah, watch that video I mentioned. We'll try to put a link in the description if we remember. Otherwise, it's, it's called How to Stop Unwanted Thoughts. Th that, that's the most powerful spiritual tool that I've pulled out of Swedenborg. So that is what I think he's talking about only from the word. So that's a tangent I wanted to go on um, and hopefully a tool I can arm you with there. Uh, so let's return to Jerry in his description. Talking more about, he talks more about here about how information matters. What I just told you just Wait. shuts them up basically so the patient can ask for spiritual help. And one thing that happens there is that, you know, the voices will make them you know when they pray they'll pray for everybody else and and not to get rid of the voices they have to specifically ask for the voices to be shut up and it's amazing how hard they find that to be and moving into what i do and, and i'm not the one that does it i mean i'm just kind of like the medium for it uh and once you start approaching telling the patient that these things are energy vampires. Um, I learned this the hard way. And there are a number of times I came back from uh, the, the prison and the, and the hospitals just completely drained of energy because they were hitting me also. Uh, so this is kind of like creeping up on them. You, you give the patient as much information about them as possible without setting them off. You'll start setting them off when you start telling the patient that they are different from them, that they don't belong to them. Uh, and it appears that the voices are shocked, that somebody is aware on the outside of their existence, and it takes them a while to kind of reconstitute. Uh, so they'll sit there and they'll listen. Where's all this going? Where's all this going? And then once it starts threatening them, then they become active and they start screaming, okay? So, um, you know, the, the patient listens to, you know, all these different facets of them. They're always negative. They're always telling you lies. They're always trying to create a negative state. You know, they hate your wife. They hate your kids. They're always telling you to do negative stuff. It's consistently negative. You know? And they kind of do to these, 
schizophrenic patients what our military does to prisoners of war. You know, they harass them constantly. Those voices are constantly harassing them. That's interesting, the the military prisoners, that we as humans have figured out a system of how do you really break someone down, make them miserable, and get them to do what you want, you know, and that the, these negative voices are using the same principles. So where, you know, where do we get that idea from in the first place? So that's, that's another facet of the experience that Jerry's had, and I want to sort of end his or end the, the tool section of it with the shortest, most practical one. And it's kind of, a, it's just a variation on that. Remember that thing I was going on and on about, about only from the word, from these principles. Here's a really simple way to use it. And it's interesting because Swedenborg says that uh, there's sort of two primary good elements, which are love and wisdom, or good and truth. And we, we've talked about that at length in other episodes of the show. But there's this counter, and the, the good and truth kind of have this joining together, or this marriage that he says. There's this sort of counter marriage of evil and falsity that Swedenborg calls the hellish marriage, so that everything evil seeks out what is false to go along with it. And that applies right here to how the voices act and the kinds of things that they say. So you can't trust anything they say. I mean, virtually everything they say about the patient is a lie. So that's one thing the patient can, can you know, everything they say about themselves, you know, about the patient himself is a lie. When they tell you something negative about yourself, you retort with, that's a lie. You don't hook on to it. Right? Now, that's something patients can do if they can remember to do it. There you go. And hopefully you can remember to do it. Again, this is not just for schizophrenic patients. This is to your own negative voices in your head. Uh, two more things from Jerry. One, these voices are here. They're in these patients' heads. What do they want? They want negative energy. Right? And they want the destruction of the person. They want, they want them, you know, it, it, it appears that they're assigned to destroy that person. Okay. And, you know, if you look at the statistics, schizophrenics kill themselves at rates uh, very much higher than the general population psychiatric patients. Um, and I think that's mostly because of the voices. And they're, you know, lots of times they're telling them, kill yourself. You know, nobody loves you. No, nobody likes you. You're, you're a waste. Kill yourself. So there's nothing like no warm and fuzzy, no limits to the voices and how they act and the kind of negativity they want to bring into people and have those people act out on the world. And I've been saying it's worth the rest of us learning about that. And here's where he ties it together. They need to realize that there is, you know, every negative thought put in their mind is put in by them, by the, by these evil things and not to dwell on it, you know, um, and, and these are things that everybody can, you know, needs to live by. I mean, uh, you know, we're talking about these evil thoughts, and, and, and but you know, everybody experiences them, and, and schizophrenics are like the top 10% of the normal curve, so it's much more obvious there. Where it becomes obvious with the normal person is with intrusive thoughts, where, you know, you're standing on top of a bridge, and you hear a thought saying, hey, uh, what would it be like to jump, or, you know... Um, some horrible intrusive thought comes in like, oh, why don't you murder this guy? Or why don't you kill? You know, it's just some horrible thing that comes in and you go, where did that come from? You know, it, it's not you. It's nothing you would ever have done. You know, it's nothing you would even want to consider. 